Yesterday marked the official beginning of spring in my home. Um, it's always the day when we open up the porch. We have this porch on the side of our house and it's screened in. And um, it's tempting to make it a year-round porch, but it's really kind of fun to have a room that we get to look forward to at a particular time of year. So we were excited to see the sun yesterday. I'm sure you were too. And we knew it's time to open the porch, which meant some of the furniture that goes on the deck in the spring and the summer began to pop up uh, on the deck. And it also meant that David got to finish getting our pond ready. And that takes a couple of days because you have to dig out all the rotten leaves and it's uh, very smelly. And then the water has to get just right because our dog is going to drink out of it and we don't want her to get sick. And it's a whole liturgy, basically. But the pond was finally ready and we could hear it. And then with all of that going on, I began to look around our yard for the first time and I saw, oh, there are snow bells up. There are crocuses. Look, there are buds on every bush. But the biggest um, excitement yesterday, and when I knew that it really was spring, was when we took Emmy, our Cocker Spaniel, on a walk, and we saw this year, as we do every year, but I always forget they're coming, the two mallards who spend every spring on the 12, 13, or 1400 block of Hinman in Evanston. And I always laugh. I was saying to Chris um, earlier that I, I kind of imagine them, you know, wherever they are in the winter, when it starts to get warmer, turn, you know, the Susie turning to him and saying, um, so when we go to the beach, when we go to the lake this summer, let's stop on Hinman and, uh, for the spring. Um, and there they are. And they, they're all, they come every year, and no matter who's walking their dog, they don't care. They stay right there. Last spring, when it was really wet and rainy, they were playing in the water, in the puddles. So it's with that, with those eyes, that I reread our lessons this morning, and I thought, there's clearly one clear message that God wants for us right now, and that is for us to live. If you remember nothing else, of anything else I say, please hear that. God wants nothing less than for us to live. Creation, our first Bible, is teaching us that right now. Look in your yard. Go to the beach. See how life is popping up through the death of winter. God desires nothing less than for us to live. It can be hard to remember that, though, and I'm grateful that we have nature and things to remind us of that. Because it's so easy to only see death, isn't it? It's so easy when, with these long gray days to think that it's always going to be with winter and never Christmas. But life does come. It's hard when we um, read the newspaper or listen to the news to see anything but death. All of the violence all over the world in our own city. The injustice, the poverty, the oppression that we create for one another. When we have to be right as a, as a human being instead of being whole. It's so easy to only see death. It's so easy to only see death when we look in our own relationships and families sometimes, in our communities, and we see broken relationships. Or we see people we love um, getting sicker and sicker, and we wonder, where is God in this? And it's sometimes easy to only see death when we begin to believe that endless chatter in our own minds that tells us we should be afraid. We should be ashamed. We should not be angry. Or whatever it is, that story that we hear that tells us that we are not good. It's so easy to forget that God wants one thing for us, for us to live. What great news to hear this last week of Lent, don't you think? Next week begins the holiest week that we have as Christians. I'd say. We're going to begin with a big parade, and then we're going to walk through this week that reminds us 
exactly what God desires, life. Think about the story of Lazarus. Jesus intentionally does not come for four days. And that's because he wants us to see that it's not, that God is not just about keeping us out of death or away from death, but giving us life through death. It is through meeting Lazarus once he's died that Jesus can show how the love of God brings us through death into life, what God ultimately desires. Every year, winter comes and nature dies, and every year, through that death, there's life. How important for us to remember this right before Holy Week. And I love the fact that we're not in this alone that God calls us to life in community. Maybe some of you have been thinking about this already. So maybe you're like Ezekiel and you're a prophet and you're here to call out to all of us, live, and to remind us that we don't need to believe the lie, the chatter in in our head, that our hearts, our souls are not dry bones and brittle, but they're bones that belong to a living God. And so if you are a prophet, please call out to all of us. Dry bones live. And if you're feeling dry, then receive the breath of the Holy Spirit. And let it remind you that God desires nothing else but that we live. Or maybe you find yourself like Lazarus, so bound up in grave clothes you can barely walk. But you are not alone because there are people here who will help take those off of you so that you can be free. If you are someone called to do that, then please step forward and help us take the grave clothes off of us so that we can live. This last week of Lent, look once more on what you decided to either take on or give up or do to honor this holy season. See if it's serving you to help you remember the one thing that God desires, the one thing that God wants, the one thing that God does, which is to make us live. And then be quiet and listen. Listen carefully for the voice of Christ calling out to all of us, Holy Comforter, come out.